All right, next up, we've got Moeen Syed. Hey, Moeen. Hey, Chris. How you doing? See ya. Yeah. So I think most people probably know you by now, but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I am a 23-year-old visual effects artist from Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, co-founder of Nine Between, it's a small South African studio. And um, so I'm also last year's winner of the Hulai competition. And this year, decided to do a bunch of reviews for Mardini. So um, that's probably where most people know me from now. And um, yeah, that's about it. Well, thank you uh, so much for being part of Mardini. Uh, it was so awesome to have you doing the reviews and adding so much to the community and giving people feedback. And it was awesome. So what are you going to be talking about today? Okay, so today we're going to be doing very similar to the style that I did with the other reviews. Um, just going to go over the top three entries, though. Just break down what makes them so good um, and why they became the best artworks of the competition. Um, because there were loads of great artworks. Like, I mean, every single day people are putting out insane artworks and to narrow it down to just three is crazy. Um, and so just what separates them, what sets them apart, what makes them so good. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's it really. Looking forward to it. Let's get started. Great. As some of you may know, I've been doing the Mardini review videos over on my YouTube channel and I've gone over a lot of entries. And as such, I've grown to understand what makes certain entries stand out and what makes them memorable, what makes them likable and overall what makes them winning entries. Now I'm going to go over the top three entries in the images category and the top three entries in the animations category and try to break down what makes them just so brilliant. So let's start with the images category. In third place in the images category for the best overall artwork of the competition, we have this entry by Oscar. And this entry was for day 23 sleep. Now you'll notice that all of the artworks that come in the top three in the animations category and the images category have all of the baseline checkboxes ticked, right? Beautiful rendering, great texturing, a decent composition, great geometry, and a concept that aligns with the topic. However, there's something that really makes certain entries stand out, and it's quite obvious in this one. This one has a charm to it, and it's a charm that not many other entries have. And it's a charm that comes from the subtlety in the image, right? You could very easily have this exact same concept, where you have these sheep jumping over the fences, you know, someone counting sheep. However, what they've done here is they've added this level of charm. It has a childlike quality to it. You can almost imagine that this is a baby dreaming about sheep. And this idea comes across extremely well. They have these stars and the moon hanging from these strings over here. And so it makes it seem like a baby mobile. Over and above this, they also have these fluffy little sheep. When you look at this, you immediately recognize it as a sheep, but upon closer inspection, it's just a toy. It's got the googly eyes and just a little bit of leather making up its snout. And then it has this painted on face on the front. Now, this is brilliant for a couple of reasons. In terms of a daily entry, this saves you a lot of time. But more than that, it's a smart subtlety. It helps you understand that this is a toy sheep, right? This isn't a real sheep. The proportions are also whimsically inaccurate. So you have the small legs over here with the massive body and they're extremely fluffy. You also have the ear over here that just looks like a cold over piece of leather. All of these elements help you understand that this isn't a real sheep, it's a toy, but it's done in a very realistic art style, right? This isn't too cartoony, it does feel realistic. And there's so much personality in the shot and that's independent of the external attributes that make this exquisite. Right, the color variation in the background. As you can see, there's these streaks of color in the background. There's also what appear to be maybe stars in the far distance, or this could just be the wall of the baby's room. And then there's other elements that are just technically impressive. For example, the wool on these sheep, it is incredibly well done. This is well detailed, there's good variation. As you can see, there's some curling and some frizz, and there's almost a looping in the hair at certain points. And this is carried through into the ground. It's got a very soft feel to it, almost like a baby's blanket. And this doesn't appear to be texture driven on the ground because if we take a look at this area over here, you can see that there's actual loops in the fabric, right? And all of those tiny elements really add to this. And this is honestly one of my favorite entries of the entire competition. I love it. And the thing about it is that it's just so memorable. Even after the competition ended, 
I had this image sort of lingering in my head. It has such a charm to it, a whimsical feel that carries a childlike innocence with it. And for that reason, I definitely believe that this deserves one of the top three spots and it rightfully earned it. So this was a beautiful entry by Oscar. In second place, we have this entry by Mochi. Funny thing about this entry, um, this is actually my brother's entry. Now, as a judge, I couldn't vote for my entry, and I assumed that I couldn't vote for my brother's entry, so I didn't. So I didn't vote for this entry. However, he made top three, and so I thought that that was pretty awesome, that even though I didn't vote for him, he still managed to make top three. There's a few things about this that I think really make it stand out. And generally, I would say that realism is just one aspect of a good render. There's a reason that various art styles exist, and it's because they give you different feelings. Now, I'm going to firstly go over the things that make this such a good technical render, and then we can address what makes this a winning entry in my mind. So this is a shell sitting on the beach, and this was for day nine beach, right? So it is aligned with the concept. And you can imagine that the tide has come up and then receded. And what it's left are these small pools of water around the shell, as well as some bubbles and a variation in the wetness of the sand, right? Those elements alone add an incredible level of detail to the shot. It adds to the realism. Furthermore, you have variation in the sand. There's some big stones over here, and there's some dark stones and light stones, and there's these small ones, and even the small stones have variation, some dark areas and some light areas, right? Great variation. In the background, you can see that the shadows catch. There's large scale noise as well as a high frequency noise making up the finer details. As for the actual shell, you have this great detail in the crevices over here, and you also have this exquisite variation in the subsurf. As you can see over here, the way that the light catches on the subsurf varies across the surface. And so this adds to the realism once again. But as I mentioned, realism isn't enough. So the reason that I think that this is one of the best entries in the competition is once again because of the feeling. The winning entries all have a particular feeling to them, and that's what makes them memorable. The third place entry by Oscar has a charm to it, and this entry has an almost wistful dreamlike quality to it. There's this afternoon sun that hits the edge of the shell over here and provides a little bit of glow off of the edge. And you can almost imagine that you're just walking along the beach and you come across this. And it has a very soft feel. And all of these things make it memorable, that along with the realism. So of course, technically, there's all of the other impressive things in terms of rendering. There's some chromatic aberration. You can pick this up in the color variation. If you zoom into any of the edges, as you can see over here, there's a U separation in the stones. It splits the red and blue. That's just chromatic aberration. That's naturally occurring in optics, but when it comes to 3D, that's something that you can add. And so that was added once again for realism. And so all of that also blurs the line between CGI and photography. And so utilizing things like that set this apart, right? It sets it apart as a memorable entry because of both realism and the feel of it. So honestly, I love the second and third place entries. Any of these could have been first place, but the one that really stood out is this one. In first place, we have this entry by Oscar and Oscar claiming both first and third for best artwork. This one was for day 11 wave and is just incredible. And I spoke to my brother about this and he completely agrees that this one is first place material, right? This is the best artwork of the competition. And I don't think that there's a huge amount of debate surrounding that because once again, you have an image that has impact, right? It makes it memorable. This sort of shot can pretty much only be accomplished with CGI. You have this realistic wave in a martini glass. Now this is conceptually genius, right? Having this wave and the olive busy floating in the wave. This makes it feel like a raft or something. You have this olive that's caught up in this raging wave. And the level of detail, once again, is spectacular. As you can see, if you zoom in a bit, all of this detail in the wave is perfectly executed, right? All of that adds some detail that you don't initially notice, but makes the shot feel well realized and well fleshed out. Now, this over here, where there's the darker blue, is an interesting touch, because this would only occur if there's some depth to the fluid. And so you may have the small scale wave, but it still feels like it has the depth of a full wave. They also have this great ocean mist over here, 
and you can actually see the individual particles, right? It's a high resolution ocean mist and there's some motion blur to it that really gives the feel of dynamism, right? This is a static image, right? It's a still, but you get the idea across of dynamism. And this is all executed through the movement of curves and through motion blur of the ocean mist. Now, in terms of lighting, it's near perfect, right? They've ensured to hit the edges with edge light, and that just ensures that this is distinct from the background. You also have this over here to really accentuate the shapes. Even over here, they have what would be a thin hair light, just to add a distinction between the glass and the background. Those same lights play around in the water and add an extra dimension to an already near perfect shot. The olive itself over here has this speckling or condensation, whatever it may be, on it, and that just shows the attention to detail that Oscar put into this. Now, finally, concept. This is a martini glass. It's basically the logo for Mardini. It's this martini glass with the olive sitting in it. And they took that and they flipped it on its head and they abstracted it and they made it more surreal, made it more extreme. And because of that, it has an incredible level of impact. So no doubt this should be the first place entry of the competition. It's a beautiful, beautiful entry by Oscar, and I really don't have anything bad to say about it. I could keep going on about this entry, but really it wouldn't do it justice. This is a great entry by Oscar, as were all of his entries. So brilliant stuff. Right, let's move on to the animation category. In third place, we have this entry by Carl Drifter. Now, when I saw this in third, I was fairly surprised because this is an extremely good entry. If we break this down, there are a couple of elements that really make it stand out. Firstly, we take a look at the opening shot, right? The establishing shot. We have this area of focus, this bright area in the center. Out to the sides, there's almost this vignette. There's this fade to darkness towards the edges, and that gives the feeling of depth. This adds to the surreal element of this. It almost feels like you're underwater because light falls off extremely quickly underwater. So this may be the surface or whatever it may be. And this over here really signifies depth. More than that is they've really fleshed out their environment. They have these small reflections or whatever it may be, these bright areas in the background. They also have these water droplets. And these are all minor elements that help the establishing shot to make sense, right? It doesn't feel empty. This doesn't feel like it exists in a void. And in this opening shot, we also have these things in the background that we aren't too sure about, right? We don't get to see them close up. They just add some background detail. Then there's this brilliant focal shift and the subject comes into focus. Your attention is already centered over here, but the focal point now comes into the shot. So as this progresses, the focus shifts to the front and you get to see a single one of these water butterflies. Now, each one of these has some great detail to them. As you can see, their heads are made up of these faceted shapes. However, they're not perfectly geometric. There's a bit of an organic feel to them, right? That is not a perfectly sharp edge. And that's an interesting touch because this has a feel of form, yet it's sort of softened by the variation in the geometry. They also have these antenna, and you'll notice that these antenna move very slightly as the shot progresses, right? That subtlety really adds to the shot. Same thing with the water that comes off of the wings, right? That water over there is a subtlety that adds some extra dynamism to the shot. And then finally, as the shot closes, you have this wing that comes to the front. When it comes to the front, it's out of focus, and you also end up with this incredible detail in the background due to depth of field, right? This is out of focus, and you end up with the sort of five blade bouquet. And once again, this entry wins not simply because of how good it looks, but it wins because of how it makes you feel, because of the response that it elicits. I didn't even mention things like the chromatic aberration or the refraction in the water or the extra geometry or the offset of the butterflies flying. Those are all things that make it good, but what makes it excellent is the feeling. And once again, this one wins because of the feeling that it gives. It's a magical, surreal feel. And this was a brilliant entry by Carl Drifter. In second place, we have this entry by Toast.
And this entry was for J11 Wave. Now, without a doubt, this aligns with the topic, right? You have this wave up front. And as you can see, this shot over here really shows how much detail is in this wave. The way the light plays across this area over here, the variation where the leading edges are dipping or receding in different areas. There's some decent ocean spectrum or whatever that may be. And then there's this fall off due to depth of field. We have a depth of field up front, which sort of obscures our view from the camera. This is a great compositional choice. You get to have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background all formed by the same object, right? This wave recedes into the background and adds so much depth to this image. And the background is reminiscent of an afternoon sky. You have this orange, this haziness in the atmosphere, and it goes up into this light blue. And this lighting carries through into the rest of the shot. And once again, what that does is it gives you a very archetypal scene. We're all aware of this sort of surfing in the afternoon, chilled vibes kind of look, but they executed in a sort of abstracted way. And that's the next element about this, is the abstraction of form to create this spaghetti creature. So we can imagine this over here as hair or as arms, whatever it may be, and it's sort of flowing in the back. But the way that they've done it is excellent because it dips in unexpected ways, in a very organic way, in a realistic way. And the board dips and bobs, and this character sort of adapts to that movement. The dynamism in the shot is excellent. It's pretty much perfect. And once again, they've given the feel of a relaxing afternoon surf. This creature just sort of enjoying the sun as he surfs. I think that this is awesome. Can't say anything bad about it. I think that it's lovely. Also, the fact that they went for this composition is pretty cool, right? You're cutting out anything that's not necessary. You're really just focusing on this central area and the camera follows along with it, but it doesn't feel static because there's a lot of variation in the scene. So I think that this is a brilliant, brilliant entry by Toast. And in first place, we have this entry by Wesley Sison. Now, first and foremost, I have to mention the level of detail in this shot. So even if we just focus on the wall in the background for a second, we get to see that there's this incredible attention to detail. And it may seem that way, but it's most likely just the texture. It's an extremely efficient use of texturing. They add this texture in the background to add a bit of displacement to their wall and a bit of color variation. That's not the only variation they have. They layer the variation on by also doing this lighting over here. You can see that the light is obstructed towards the bottom and it sort of comes in in these shafts. Now that gives the idea that perhaps there's a window off to the side over here and that the light sort of pours in this way. Now that variation is great, but that's not all. There's the sort of bevel to the stand and that's good geometry, but more than that, there's great texturing. If you look over here, there's some variation on the edges over there. That's a variation in roughness. Same thing over here. You can think of this as fingerprints or wear, grunge, whatever that is, they've added it. Even on this pole over here, you can notice that there's this minor detail, right? All of that's great, but we haven't even spoken about the subject of the image, right? So this was for day two growth. And they have this sort of growth pattern and it seems to be differential growth or whatever it may be it grows in a very organic fashion. Now, an interesting thing about this is that there's elements to this where there's movement and there's elements where there just isn't. And once again, this incredible attention to detail is carried through into the subject matter. If you look into the areas that are more or less solidified, it's this darker blue, right? This greenish blue, it's almost a metallic color. But these areas that are growing out are this lighter sort of brass color. And so this actual growth has incredible variation to it as well in terms of both movement and texturing. Finally, if we look at the center point over here, we have these vines that creep up along this frosted glass. Now, I can't stress enough how much variation is in the shot, how much detail there is. Once again, they have this variation in roughness, right? The way that the light catches on these scratches on the glass looks incredible. It makes this light in the center more diffused. And as this grows, you begin to cover that light. That light moves around very subtly. And all of these things just make the shot 
excellent. I can't fault the shot in any way. And as far as rendering goes, I'd say this is close to perfect. And I don't just throw that word around, but there's not much that I could say could be improved on this shot. And so for that reason, I do think that this is deserving of Mardini's best artwork. It's a truly incredible entry by Wesley Sison. So that's all for this presentation. Thank you for listening. I appreciate that you took the time. And um, of course, everything that I've said here is about art and art is subjective. So you have free reigns to completely disagree with me on anything that I've said, but this is just my opinion about those top six artworks. I think that there's an incredible amount to learn from all of those artworks. In fact, I think that there's an incredible amount to learn from Mardini in general. And for that reason, I think I have to end this by just giving a special thanks to SideFX. They've held two great community events, right? they've held Hulai and Mardini, and both of them have been excellent opportunities to learn and grow and have fun while doing so. So even if they don't continue this into the future, I think that these two opportunities have been incredible. A special thank you to SideFX, a congratulations to all the winners, and even to those who didn't win, I think that just entering in the first place is commendable. And so yeah, that's it for my presentation. Do hope you enjoyed. Bye.